Johnny Ellick and Chris Huston, welcome to the Pre-Construction Podcast. Good morning. Excellent. I'm Thanks looking so much forward to this one. Yeah, looking forward to it. So, guys, the reason we've got you on is because you are speaking at the Advancing Pre-Construction Conference in Phoenix this year. You guys are on the Wednesday at 1 o'clock local time. So, anybody go on, make sure you see these guys on stage. Now, we're going to do a little bit of a preview. Give people a little bit of a bio on Rearc, your company. Let's start there. Guys, who wants to take a lead? Tell us about Rearc. How did it come about? I'll, I'll take a stab at it. So, Rearc is coming up on about 20 years old. Uh, my father founded the company in 2003. Um, we are a little bit unique in that we're, uh, in addition to being a construction management firm, we're also a development firm on the front end. We do a lot of our own commercial uh, office and industrial development, and we also do facilities and property management on the back end. So uh, we're a little bit unique in that we're uh, offering additional services than most of our competition. Uh, so we like to think of ourselves as vertically integrated. Um, we're located in Vermont, uh, South Burlington, Vermont, and we work uh, all throughout New England, and we're coming up on about $100 million in volume, construction volume. Love it. Wow, guys. Brilliant. And what is that across all sectors, all, all industries, or do you guys concentrate on anything? Yeah, we, 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 uh, we, I guess playing in this smaller geography, you really have to be a jack of all trades. You can't really specialize in any one given area. So, we work on a multitude of different projects from uh, multifamily, affordable housing, uh, institutional work for universities and private schools, uh, a lot of medical work for local and regional hospitals, uh, industrial, uh, we're doing a, a huge distribution uh, warehouse and manufacturing facility right now. Um, so we really, it crosses the whole entire gamut of the construction world and even throwing a, a high-end ski and ski out house and even a, a lakefront property as well. Even though we're not really residential developers, uh, a lot of that's through relationships. Love it. Yeah, that's what it's all about, relationships. Now, you talked about the multiple services. Maybe, Chris, you could come in on that. How did that come about and why focus on that? Sure. So, Gareth, just a real quick background. Um, I've been with REARC now as vice president of pre-construction for three years. Um, I am licensed architect for 30 years of my career. So I'm, I'm bringing uh, a range of experience. Started off my career in Boston working hard bid public schools. Not Ooh, tremendously yeah. fun what project a, delivery. <laughs> what a pedigree. Hard bid in Boston. Hard. You're no, made of He's a yeah. pit bull. <laughs> so, so with that, there was zero pre-construction. That was just duke it out, right? I really did that for over a decade. Did not learn a lot, but did not love it. I then moved my family to Quaint, Vermont. And um, I, I actually was involved, uh, led a design build company for 14 years. So I really looked at that integration, that integrated approach and the power of the team. I then started my own firm and then teamed up with REARC. Johnny convinced me that this vice president of pre-construction role was invaluable. And I experienced it myself, right? Um, firsthand, as an architect, I've seen really good pre-construction and really bad. I saw the value to our clients, joined. And from there, you know, it's really, uh, Gareth, as you said, it's about serving the clients and bringing tremendous value at that critical uh, upfront, all the upfront activities leading to a successful start of construction. Brilliant. What a team. What You're a match made in heaven, guys, honestly. Um, so, so tell me now, these integrated services, um, we're hearing a little bit of more now than modern companies. What does it involve and how is it structured? Go for it, Chris. So, yeah, I'll jump into that. You know, essentially, as, as Johnny mentioned, Gareth, from the beginning, we have a, a, a very deep uh, portfolio of experience, right, from our team, not only from the architect side, we have now two, two architects in pre-construction, but also we have in-house mechanical services that really looks at, you know, um, the critical aspects of understanding the best and most appropriate mechanical system for, for every project, for every client. And then, as Johnny said, on the management, on the property management side, since we manage over a million square feet of space, we bring all of that knowledge and expertise to our clients to say, hey, there's an upfront cost and there's an operational cost. You, you have to, as a developer, we understand also, 
you have to make a pro forma work. So how do you get those things all to come together and in a cohesive, you know, delivery model that, that frankly puts our clients first and, and at our presentation in Phoenix, we're really going to be talking a lot about focusing on the client and how that is a benefit to us. And, and it ultimately leads to repeat work. Absolutely. And guys, we, we joked about it beforehand. How have you seen, I mean, 30, 40 years of experience between the two of you or, or combined, what is the difference you're seeing now with clients? Are they understanding the importance of putting resources in early on and then getting the, reaping the, the benefits later on throughout the project? Yeah, I mean, more and more uh, owners are getting more and more sophisticated. They understand that there's not as much value in the hard bid process. Uh, like Chris said earlier, if you're hard bidding a project, uh, pre-construction pretty much is useless. It's it falls by the wayside, and and, and that's really where uh, we come in. Is that's we focus on construction management delivery and design build uh, to to really focus on that front end, and that's uh, where owners are seeing a huge benefit with Chris and his team and the value that we can bring to the table. Because our philosophy is more minds around the table, the better. And in a hard bid world, it's it's architects and engineers designing in a vacuum and then putting the, the product out to bid, that's us, and finding that it's oftentimes overbid. And then you're kind of repeating that 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 cycle, that uh, that never ending loop uh, that just doesn't bring value, uh, drags on projects, and really uh, it, it just benefits no one. Absolutely, yeah. And one of the topics, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's within the topic that you're discussing that I really like, and it's it's talking about storytelling and visualization. Um, now, that's easier said than done, especially the storytelling. I find that storytelling is either, it comes naturally to people, um, generally funny people, but real, real, <laughs> real good people. And then the visualization part, part so could we, could we kind of segment them and, and tell us a little bit about them? Sure. I'll, I'll jump in on that one, Johnny, and then uh, add, add to it. I mean, this this is uh, one of the early adoptions, if you will. I, we find we we first of all, Gareth, we we have fun at work like that is one of our core values. If you're not having fun, forget it. It's, it's you know, it's not worth it. So putting fun first, enjoying really being very passionate about what we do. One of the early adoption um, um, innovations that, that Johnny, before I even joined, was to incorporate this, this approach to storytelling through video proposals. And we're gonna talk uh, quite a bit about that at our presentation, but that is incredibly powerful to allow the clients to meet the team, understand how we're unique, understand our approach to their project, not low, look how great we are. We're storytellers and we've done this and that. No, it's like, this is what we're going to do for you and articulating that storytelling in a very factual way, right? Allows them to understand the actual factual value that we bring. We talk a little bit, Gareth, about the actual money we save our clients during very well executed pre-construction services. And, and that's a demonstration, right? So they they any new client can see it and understand that. But it's a big investment of time. It's not, as you said, it is not, it's not necessarily an easy lift lift. You have to be committed to that upfront effort. It, you know, John, it's, if you have things to add. Yeah, it's a huge investment of time. I mean, we have a, a whole media and uh, marketing and video production team. But when you're going after a project, uh, you're, you're oftentimes going up against a, a number of competitors. And really what it comes down to is whoever wants it more gets it. Uh, and we can invest 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 grand even in a pursuit. So if you go that extra mile, uh, that can oftentimes be the difference of, of winning that project or not. Uh, and, and resumes don't come to life on paper like this, uh, the way they do with a video proposal. You get to really meet our, our project team. You get to meet the superintendent. You get to meet the project manager. You get to meet Chris, who's going to be leading the charge in pre-construction services. Understand who we are as a company, how we're going to attack your, your project, and understand who we are as a company and our core philosophies. And you just don't get that on your typical uh, PDF submission or even hard copy. So uh, the, the video production, it definitely, uh, we've been doing it for a handful of years now, and um Certainly at, at the first uh, couple cracks at it, uh, having a camera in your face is never easy and you you sound silly and you're like, wow, I look like I need to drop 30 pounds. But 
Uh, <laughs> over time, it becomes easier, and uh, it, it's made a huge uh, difference for us uh, in our uh, hit rate. Brilliant. And I love it, guys, because I tell you what it is. It's a two-way street, the whole thing. You're happy to invest 50 or 60K into knowing that you're going to get And By the way, you're actually backing yourself because you don't do that unless you know that, the, A, the project's perfect for you, and B, you can deliver. So you're Absolutely. doing that. And during that whole conversation, you're saying to them, listen, if you want us to deliver what we've told you, you've got to front end the pre-construction services because that's what we're all about. And I told you, I mentioned this beforehand. We did one on West Palmisano. I told you, check it out. And he's got the same philosophy and it's incredibly successfully. As long as we get everyone else thinking on the same the same lines, I think it's, it's good for the industry. Yeah. And uh, just to pull on that thread, like you said earlier, uh, making sure that the project is a, a good fit for us. We have an incredibly stringent go, no go process. Uh, Chris and I and a handful of others are in on those early meetings. And if they're not a good fit, we're not, a, we're not afraid to walk away. We really need, we make sure that it, it, it's a good uh, fit for our services of pre-construction services that the owner understands uh, the value we're bringing to the table. Uh, and uh, during the conference, we're definitely going to dive in a little bit more into that. So please uh, come by and uh, see our presentation. Oh, I'll be there. But again, just to kind of touch on that as well, it's amazing how powerful the word no is. And and, and then once you say <laughs> no, it just opens up a whole different discussion. And I get it, it actually, rather than the, the contractors constantly being pushed around and having so much risk laid on their table, um, and it's not healthy for anyone. I mean, we keep talking about wellness in, in the industry. The more we say no, the more it'll help everyone within our companies. And Absolutely. Gareth, on that point specifically, there has been certainly silver linings in our experience. You had asked earlier at the beginning, you know, what have we seen in our, you know, 40, 50 years of, of experience? And that is simply that it is so easy for us now to say absolutely no hard bid. No, period. We're not pursuing it. There's too much risk. And part of that comes out of the, the madness of the market that we're currently living through. And we're finding now, time and again, both architects and owners are coming to us and coming to others, our competitors as well, with a construction management approach because they see, they they know that they need that input early in the process. Otherwise, they themselves, architects in particular, and owners understand that they're taking on their own risk by going hard bid. So the market has actually opened up this opportunity for us to just, you know, walk right through the door. Love it. And one thing as well that you're going to talk about in the conference is the debrief, the feedback from the clients. I mean, I'm sure if you have started that early on, I mean, you mentioned there you joined in 2000, or sorry, 2003, so you're going 20 years. I'm sure the feedback year in, year out, has been, helped you evolve your company and, and like allowed you to focus on the right things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the kickoff meeting and the closeout meeting of any project are arguably the most important because uh, your kickoff meeting you're getting the entire team kind of all rowing in unison in the in the bus sitting in the right seats, and in the closeout meeting you're you're having those critical lessons learned what you can be doing better. Uh, we've we've actually implemented uh, surveys that we send out uh, during and even after our, our projects to all project stakeholders. And in addition to um, uh, our internal closeout meeting, we're doing now external closeout meetings with the client, with the owner, with all the major stakeholders. And you just learn so much from that. And I think a lot of firms are just so ready to move on to the next one. And I think it's really important to slow down and really understand what you did well and what you uh, might have had some room for improvement. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say now, people are, I, I talk to contractors at all levels, small, medium, large contractors. And that's one thing that they're looking forward to with the, with the whole fluctuating prices. And the, the, the I want to say that the market kind of taken, taken a, a step. This year will allow people to, to, to deliver projects much, much better because they'll be given time and subcontractors alike. Um, and how do you guys work the whole subcontractor thing? I mean, obviously within Vermont, you guys are, are, are really well known. You're doing a hundred million. How important is that? And, and how do you guys leverage those relationships? Relationship, 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 relationships. I mean, it really, it sounds uh, kind of cliche and a little, little cheesy, but it's, it's how you treat people. And that that's a core philosophy of Vivar's. Like Chris said, we like to have fun. We like to, we like to go out and do things as, as a group. And, and that, that trickles down to, to the sub level. You, you got to treat people with respect the way you want to be treated. 
uh, paying people on time, uh, a lot of times even early. Uh, cash flow is incredibly important to a lot of uh, smaller subs. I mean, any business cash flow is king, but uh, certainly some of the smaller uh, mom and pop ones where a lot of the folks who own it are out there swinging a hammer or are leading their their folks. So you you got to really be uh, cognizant of those relationships and and definitely uh, protect the the important ones. Yeah, repeat business, Gareth, is 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 not just with the with our clients and owners. It's the entire team. And, you know, where other parts of the country might be seven degrees of separation up here in little Vermont, it's like three or four. So everyone knows everyone. And, and you just need to, we understand that you, you simply have to be respectful, right? You have to treat everyone as if they're a very important part of the team, which they are. And we're always surprised that at the times when perhaps our competitors might not treat subs with the same respect and that that comes around absolutely you're right the wheel always goes round guys you've got me buzzing for uh for this year i know your backlog is straight through 2023 and into 2024 what else can we can we expect from rearc what what's the plans any uh any major um major secrets or, or plans for 2023 and 2024 well, uh, we're continuing to uh, grow. If you're not growing, you're uh, going in the other direction. Uh, we're actually looking at continuing uh, continuing that growth and opening an office uh, in New Hampshire. Uh, so we hope to continue to, to spread throughout New England further, uh, but opening our second office is uh, pretty exciting. Brilliant. Man, thank you very much. There you are, folks, REARC in the New Hampshire. If you're a client in New Hampshire, if you're an employee in New Hampshire, keep an eye out. These guys are coming for you. Lads, I cannot wait to see Advancing Pre-Construction. Anybody going to the conference, it's on the Wednesday, 1 o'clock local time. Make sure you watch these guys on, on stage. Come check us out. Thanks, Gareth. Thanks so much, Gareth.